Okay, so in the last uh, lecture, we completed uh, the position kinematics problem. Direct we had completed earlier and we completed inverse kinematics also, inverse position kinematics also. Today, we will go to the velocity kinematics, which is also highly important. And in this velocity kinematics problem, I will try to show you several parallel um, avenues to understand the basic formulation, the basic ideas. Finally, through whichever formulation you appreciate it, you will come to the same uh, calculations. Now, it is important to understand this clearly, otherwise uh, confusions sometimes uh, stay for years. So, first a few fundamental notations. The velocity of a point Q, which has some representation in frame B, represented as represented by its position vector Q in frame B. Okay. And for getting the position vector for in the in some other frame, you have to do some business behind it. But right now we are talking about this itself. Now if its velocity is required in frame A, another frame, then there is some authors use this kind of a notation on the derivative sign itself, this superscript A. And that, the derivative of that, the velocity as expressed in frame A is denoted like this. Now, that velocity you can represent in frame B itself also. So that will then, you will be representing it as B, BBQ, okay? And that is this, BBQ expressed in B. And that sometimes merging both these Bs together is also represented like this. And that is the ordinary derivative, okay? And to get the transformation from this to this, you basically need to multiply with the rotation matrix representing the orientation of frame B in frame A, okay? And that is the relationship. So you have to keep this in mind and this thing has to be done again and again many times when you solve the velocity kinematics problem of a manipulator. Then motion of a frame of reference itself can be described. This is absolute velocities, okay? Vc and omega c, linear motion and angular motion. So linear motion of the frame of reference basically means the linear motion of its origin as a point. That is velocity of the origin of the frame c as expressed in the universal fixed frame. Okay, that is why it is absolute. And similarly, when you take the angular velocity of frame C in the absolute frame, universal frame, U, then you call it this. So these quantities, small Vc and small omega C, these are absolute quantities. Then how do you get the velocity of point Q referred to frame A through frame B? So, point Q has a description in frame B and frame B origin itself may be moving with respect to the frame A origin. Not only that, frame B might be rotating relative to frame A. So that has three components, this velocity. First is the standard relative velocity formula. Velocity of the origin of the frame and then origin to point Q. 
okay that actually has two components one is this standard omega cross r okay and the other is this okay so that is this and similarly for the frame of reference b the angular velocity is as expressed in frame b itself multiplied with the rotation matrix describing the orientation of the frame b relative to frame a now at this point the biggest amount of confusion arises some people feel that this must be zero but make note that this is not the angular velocity of b relative to frame b no that would be zero it is the angular velocity of b as a vector with three components as expressed in the frame of reference b it's not relative velocity it's a vector angular vector angular velocity vector as expressed in frame b for example frame b might be rotating okay and that rotation may be about this axis which may have some component along its x along its y along its z so those three components you can write this component into i plus this component into j plus this component into k that's a vector now take that vector and multiply with this orientation matrix which is representing the orientation of frame b relative to a then that same vector you will get in a and here there is no talk about origin to origin shift nothing this is angular velocity okay so this is the understanding b omega b is an actual vector angular velocity of b as you express expressed it in the x y z components of the frame b itself now this is a fundamental way of figuring out the description of the angular velocity vector okay we start from a basic identity that is rotation matrix into its transpose is identity basically because rotation matrix is an orthogonal matrix now we would differentiate it very innocently derivative of a product is derivative of this guy into this guy plus derivative of this guy sorry plus this guy into derivative of this guy we do that r dot into r transpose plus r into r dot transpose equal to derivative on this side this is a constant matrix so its time derivative will be zero so zero and then you call this first fellow as s just it's a notation okay call it s call it whatever you like r dot r transpose that will be negative of this guy okay so that's it and now note that a b transpose will be b a transpose transpose okay so transposition operates in the product in the reverse so that is this and now note that whatever is the matrix inside the parenthesis that is actually this only okay so this matrix s is its own transpose negative and that's it q symmetric matrix so for a q symmetric matrix the diagonal components are zero and of diagonal components components are positive negative pairs like this whatever is here its negative will be here whatever is here its negative will be here whatever is here its negative will be here that is a necessity for a q symmetric matrix so for some three values omega x omega y omega z you could write it like this fine now you note that in now there we called the general 
point in frame expressed in frame B as Q. Here we are calling the same thing as P. So the location, the position vector P in frame A is the vector itself. Okay. That is not the origin to origin shift. So that is as the vector is expressed in frame B multiplied with the rotation matrix. And why the origin to origin shift we are not considering here because here we are bothered about developing angular velocity itself as if the origins of the two frames of reference are coincident. Okay. And so this BP is inverse of this into AP. Fine. Now, if we try to differentiate this, If the point P is fixed in frame B, that it's a point in the body B itself, and body B is rigid, then while differentiating it, you will have derivative of this into this, plus this into derivative of this, which is zero. So that is simply this. And BP, just now we have found as this. So we insert it here. And R inverse is R transpose because R is orthogonal. So you have it this. And now you see our old friend S has appeared, R dot R transpose. Okay. You see S is R dot R transpose. So this R dot R transpose we replace with S with superscript subscript to show that this is the corresponding skew symmetric matrix representing the angular velocity related thing that should come here for B in the frame of reference A. And now there is an interesting thing. I suggest that this exercise you do on your own you multiply this matrix to a vector, just write P, Q, R, X, Y, Z, whatever. You multiply that vector and find the product, matrix vector product. That will have what? This components of this vector, that is what will come in that vector and these three numbers, omega x, omega y, omega z. And independently, you try to conduct this cross vector product between two vectors, simple vector, in which this omega, capital omega, that is omega x, omega y, omega z, those same omega x, omega y, omega z, those three numbers you put in a vector as if it is omega x i plus omega y j plus omega z k that's angular velocity vector and take the cross product with the same vector and you will find that they are same so from here whatever you get that turns out to be omega cross r okay and that makes very good sense something that you know and now note if for rotation you have utilized the angle axis formulation, then you would get this R dot as this. Now here, a little extra detailed clarification may be needed if you do not agree to conduct this analysis on your own. And for that, I will use this. Uh oh yes so if r has got this representation if this is how we are representing the rotation or orientation then you differentiate it so differentiation means what derivative of each and every term with respect to theta into theta dot so that theta dot i have kept outside so V theta is verse theta, that is one minus cos theta. Its derivative will be plus sine theta. So this will be 
k x square into sin theta minus simply sin theta. That is together this. This will be k x k y sin theta plus k z cos theta. That is here. Similarly, this and so on. Okay. So the way these three have been done, the same way you will do these three and then the other three also. Fine, do that according to this. And then now in the next line, I have kept this theta dot on this side. And claiming this to be just this matrix into the original matrix R. And this you should verify at least some of the terms. So try to find out the product of this matrix and this matrix R sitting here. Zero times this one minus KZ times this plus KY times this. These two will contribute. Now contribute some V theta terms and some S theta terms. Now see how V theta terms go off. Minus KZ times this. So it will have minus KX, KY, KZ versus theta. And in the next one, you will get KY into this. That is plus KX, KY, KZ versus theta. So versus theta terms will get cancelled out. Sine theta terms will survive. And that will be minus KZ square sine theta minus KY square sine theta. Okay. So minus KZ square minus KY square. And that is KX square minus one because KX square plus KY square plus KZ square is one. So that is this term. Now for the next term, second row and first column. So here this middle one will not contribute to anything because here it is zero. So KZ times the above minus kx times the lowermost one. So look at the first theta terms. kz into kx square positive and this one will contribute kx into kz square negative. Here also the first theta terms will go off. Sine theta term will remain and some cos theta term also will remain. See kz times cos theta that is here minus kx into minus ky that is plus kx ky sine theta that is here. So like that you will get the other terms that I leave you leave for you as exercise. So indeed this matrix into this original R matrix is going to give you R dot. Of course the theta dot also will come fine. So this establishes this simple representation. And now you see if you insert theta dot here, then you will get this matrix as something that you got as omega x, omega y, omega z. In place of omega x, now you will have kx theta dot. In place of omega y, you will have ky theta dot. And in place of omega z, you would have ky kz theta dot okay and that's the rest of it okay another way you can try to handle it okay we go back to that original one and come back here for seeing another perspective Okay, so this is what we established just now. And then from here, you will get S, which is R dot into R inverse or R dot into R transpose as the skew symmetric, skew symmetric matrix version of capital omega, where capital omega vector, angular velocity vector is theta dot k. So whatever was rot theta, rot k theta, its derivative, when you take, then you finally arrive at an angular velocity vector, 
which is just the angular velocity magnitude theta and the direction k and that's it okay so now look at another way of developing this look at it look at the angular velocity this way a body in orientation r undergoes a small rotation of delta theta about an axis k fine so the new orientation now in calculus you know that anything old is r anything new is r plus delta r. the difference that has come in between is delta r. so that same notation we are using the new orientation is r plus delta r and that is this rotation that has taken place in the frame of reference the orientation of which is r you see so that is what you have got okay actually now you want to evaluate this delta r so this delta r would be this thing minus the original r get it here so this matrix into delta r sorry this matrix into r minus r itself which is identity into r so taking r common you get like this and now another interesting thing is that this is actually this and for that we go to the clarification analysis again this is what we are trying to evaluate okay so this hat i have not put here for you know writing less laziness but we know that it is a unit vector otherwise it will not make correct sense so always try to ensure that the axis that you have got in this context k that's a unit vector that is important okay and while developing this we keep in mind that small angle delta theta means s delta theta the sine delta theta is same as delta theta cos delta theta is 1 and therefore 1 minus cos delta theta is 0 okay so use these three things in the expression for this okay so verse theta is 0 cos the uh, verse delta theta is 0 cos delta theta is 1 sin delta theta is simply delta theta now use that here verse theta is verse delta theta is 0 in place of theta you will put delta theta okay so verse delta theta is 0 so this is gone cos delta theta is 1 so here you will have 1 minus 1 coming from identity will get you 0 then here verse delta theta is 0 and from here you will get minus kz sin delta theta sin delta theta is same as delta theta so pp Okay, minus kz delta theta and similarly here this would be 0 and this would be kz into delta theta that is negative of this and so on so like this you fill up this and the way in the case of angular velocity the rate of uh, angular motion we got minus kz into theta dot here you are getting minus kz into delta theta obviously because now both sides you will divide by delta t so here you would get delta r by delta t that is then take the limit as delta t tends to zero so here you would get r dot so that divided by delta t t here would give you the same division and taking the limit would give you theta dot okay so you would come to the same conclusion or similar conclusion there so here we have gone through it through small rotation okay so that is this and that means that the angular velocity vector which you can recover from that skew symmetric matrix also 
turns out to be simply omega k. This is the scalar magnitude of the angular velocity. This is the direction of it. And that is this. And the rest of it is similar. Okay. So note that omega cross r is equivalent to the matrix vector multiplication like this. Here it is as if you have written it as i, j, k components and here as if you have written it as a column vector. And so this omega cross r is actually coming as something similar to this. Okay. And this much till now we have done that is considering orientation issues only. R dot we were talking about. Similarly, you can work out the rate of the transformation matrix as rigid body motion takes place, both angular motion and linear motion. Then here that R dot would appear into picture and here it is T dot ordinary, okay? Because T is a vector to begin with. With R there was a problem because R was not a vector, but small rotations are vectors and they would commute also in multiplication, okay? And angular velocity is also a vector that we have seen, okay? So T dot is this transformation into P. Okay. Now, before we go forward, we should have a quick look at another little explanation in the context which I have mentioned, I mentioned earlier once, that role pitch your representation of orientation has a distinct advantage over Euler angles. Okay. ZYZ and this is Zy x. So in the role pitch your representation, the wherever that alpha beta gamma appears, in place of alpha beta gamma, I have used delta theta z, delta theta y, and delta theta x. Okay. And in the big matrix that we had, I have put those values here rather than cos alpha, cos beta minus one, I have written this, okay? Minus i. So that is why from the diagonal entries, I have subtracted minus one, okay? This third column I have left for you into R. So delta R is rotation matrix minus I3, small rotation matrix minus I3 times capital R as above, okay? And that is this. This minus I3 has been incorporated through these subtractions in the diagonal entries. Now again, notice that cosine of every small angle is one and sine of every small angle is the small angle itself. That's not zero, okay? So one into one minus one, that is zero. Then delta theta z into one, that is six. Then minus delta theta y, okay? And then similarly, you construct this column and this column, okay? And now we will go to this, but you munch over whatever has been covered till this point for one minute and I will come and join you again after one minute, a small little break.
okay in the remaining part of this discussion uh, we will do two things one is we will study the motion composition from link to link and why do we do this because the kind of manipulators the kind of robot manipulators that we are studying there it's a serial manipulator so with the fixed frame we have link one attached through link joint one then with link one we have link two attached through joint two and so on and each of these joints is prismatic or revolute okay so one thing we know that the velocity linear velocity as well as angular velocity of one of the links is zero okay and that is the fixed frame the frame zero so relative to that we can describe the motion of the link one okay angular motion linear motion of any point on it whatever when we say linear motion of any point on it in particular it also means the linear motion of the point where it is attached with the next link and or the frame of reference the origin of the frame of reference of the next link and so on so and in that context in that again relative to frame one we can express the motion of link two or anything which has a representation in link two and so on so from link zero to link one link one to link two with each link we have a frame of reference attached we can develop the velocity relationships and that means at the end of the entire discussion we will be in a position to represent the velocity quantities of each and every link each and every point in whichever frame we want that is what we do like this through recursive relations this we will cover in the next lecture and then in the next lecture one more important thing we will do and that will be a direct global representation of the velocity transformation itself okay as input velocities to output velocities and that is a straightforward clear cut calculus approach okay so these two things which are actually going to have enormous operational importance we will cover in the next lecture okay thank you because if we start it in this lecture we will not be able to finish it